What you have to do is have everyone be an owner, and now suddenly, any gain in automation is a gain for everybody. If you grow just one thing, it may not grow as well as if it grows with another thing. A good example of that is called the, the Three Sisters Method of Farming. There is definitely multi-apartment buildings or multi-families that do do a passive A hundred million dollars that they gave to Joe Rogan that they would kind of be out if they bring is that a bigger number or is two billion a bigger number i don't know Sam. it's a tough one i know it's really hard and maybe maybe yes. comparing numbers is not uh jeremy strong gotta go kill a jenny i still don't think you should kill her i don't think it's a good idea it's a ghost dude welcome back everybody to bread theory so tonight we're going to be continuing on with a people's history of the united states we are on chapter seven finally uh, it seems like we've been doing this for quite some time, um, but that's just because, it's, you know, they're, they're, they're long, meaty chapters. So it, it, it does take several parts just to get through each chapter, but we're all the way to chapter seven, which I think is pretty close, if I'm not mistaken, pretty close to halfway through the book. Let's see how many chapters we've got in total. Oh, uh, 24. All right, so we're less, <laughs> less than the third, actually. So never mind. Um, but anyway, we're, we're making a good pace and I'm pretty satisfied with the progress that we have made. Um, so yeah, so before we get into it, uh, let's see. Oh, there was one thing I wanted to bring up. Um, since Dan and I were talking about, what, the, what was the name of the comic now? Sinfest, I believe. Yeah, Sinfest. Last night, uh, I jogged my memory where I've 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 seen that style before, and uh, let's see if I can bring it up here. Where is it? There it is. So I'll share it with you now. So this is the comic that I've seen. This is, this is my first exposure to Sinfest, and I thought this was actually a pretty funny bit of of satire. Um, but I guess it it kind of goes to to show what Dan was talking about that. That in his belief, good satire is is hard to distinguish from, um, you know. Uh, satire is hard to determine whether or not it's it's actually on your side. That, that's part of good satire. Um, so this one I thought was just. I didn't I didn't take it seriously. It seems to be a joke. It's so over the top, but having read through all that that stuff last night, I gotta kind of wonder, especially with the artist's turf arc so here we go i'll just describe comedy for you because that's the, the funniest way of doing it um so we have a uh, mother and daughter innocent walking to school unicorns rainbows heart stuff like that um but then the lights go off the the teacher reveals themselves to be a lizard person and they're I don't know what all these things are supposed to be. Brain does not equal heart. Heart, some two of those things. Uh, transgender symbol on the gingerbread man or person. Um, does that mean heart is not equal identity? I don't quite know. So your identity could be blue. Your heart could be pink ostensibly your heart is not transgender your brain is not your body it's all these things that they're learning and then they're just dazzled and then they they do the the people's fist in front of a bunch of different stuff we have extinction rebellion antifa prawn nouns instead of porn hub yeah mixing that together the cdc the rainbow flag all this sort of thing and then there's a warning light that goes off and they quickly switch, a, you know, put everything away. And oh, OK, so this teacher was already in class and this this girl is coming late. The teacher tells everyone to be quiet and to come in and everything looks normal again. So about indoctrinating kids. I thought that was just a joke um, about the the hyper reactionary types who, who literally think this sort of thing. Oh, wow. We got people already. Hey there, Park Nickel and Ali Osher. How y'all doing? Oh, you just raided with seven viewers. Thank you so much, Ali Osher. I really appreciate that. Everyone follow Ali Osher. Mm. 
Real great streamer. How did your stream go tonight, Allie? I would love to know. What were you what were you covering? What were the big news items of the day? Hopefully we've gotten past the Queen at this point. I tell you, I cannot take any more coverage about that. It's just so boring. <laughs> I really don't care. Um, so yeah. So yeah, so anyway, that I just thought I'd I'd bring that up that that one comic and how I was I was uh yeah. I thought it a bit strange to, to find out this person actually does seem to believe in these things that, that are on this comic because it again it just seems so over the top. Like, come on. Where where is really the satire if you actually believe that this level of indoctrination is, is actually happening in the classroom? I don't know. But anyway, just thought I found that interesting. So I thought I would share that with y'all. All right. So for those for those of you just joining, we are going to be covering Howard Zinn's A People's History of the United States tonight. We are on Chapter 7, which is about broken treaties. So fun stuff ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, trigger warning if you hate colonialism. Because there's going to be a bunch of it coming up. Um, but yeah, um, and as always, if you're new to this, this channel... Um, this is a, a learning space, so I, I always like to say the only bad question is a question asked in bad faith. So, always here to, to make this more educational for you. We're not about ridiculing people for being, you know, neophytes or noobs or whatever. We're about helping people just, you know, grow and expand as, as people. Learn to be, to, to be more compassionate, empathetic, all that great stuff. Allie is cool. I agree. Thanks, James. I, I did acknowledge the raid as well. So, shout it out, Allie, already. Um, that's the message right before you, actually. So, yeah. Um, how are you tonight, James? Oh, James, I wanted to mention, we were at a farmer's market this weekend, and we came this close to buying uh, some pepperoni rolls from one of the, the, the sellers there. But uh, the last second, we want the the cookies instead. So, but uh, it's, it it appears that that your culinary um, heritage—I don't even know what you'd call it—your <laughs> your people's stuff has made it all the way to Minnesota now. So the pepperoni roll is is growing in numbers and growing in in steam, or growing in speed, or however that that Moby song goes. Um, so eventually I will try it. I think I'd like to do a, a, a turkey pepperoni roll instead because I don't I don't usually eat pork. I just uh, it just seems uh, too close to to cannibalism to me. I, I try to avoid eating sentient creatures and and pigs. Kind of hard to look a pig in the eye and not not see a person looking back at you, right? So I'm using person in the in the the you know self-aware sort of creature sense. Um, so I avoid pork, but there's plenty of great you know alternatives, especially when it comes to like deli meats. So eventually I will try the 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 pepperoni roll, and I will get back to you. And maybe after I try it, if I'm if I'm so good, oh shoot, <laughs> here you were in ads. Did you hear any of that then, James? I was just talking about how I almost tried pepperoni rolls, but at the last minute. Decided not to, because I would rather, because I, I believe they were pork pepperoni rolls, and I tend not to eat pork. So I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, the, 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 the culinary traditions of Appalachia. Oh, you didn't hear it all. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it always helps me out to know when you are watching ads. It, you shouldn't have a pre-roll ad on. I thought I set the settings to have enough ads per hour. That there shouldn't be any pre-rolls, so that's 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 uh that's not great. Oh, so you ran the ads too? Yeah. If you guys ever want to just let me know when when an ad is up, um, that is helpful to me, so I know that that <laughs> you're not uh, privy to whatever I'm talking about, and I can just kind of ramble on about random crap. Uh, it rolled four. Oh God, Twitch is getting so bad about that. And so you got the this roll the the. I don't even call that mid-roll. It's like, you know, a couple minutes into the show. 
I've been going for 10 minutes. But yeah, that's that's disappointing. Popped up at a perfect timing. Oh, cool. Okay. So anyway, James, as I was saying, almost tried pepperoni rolls. They were at the farmer's market that I went to. But then at the last minute, decided not to. Decided that we're going to try and make it ourselves instead using turkey pepperoni. Because that is something that I'm, I'm more inclined to eat. And they make some good pep turkey pepperoni these days. So I will eventually try it. And maybe if I'm, a, you know, stricken enough by it, if it's that much of a, a um, gastric revelation, I will in fact make that, that pepperoni roll emoji just for you. Whether or not you subscribe. Oh, <laughs> okay. So you didn't get any on Alyosha's stream, and then all of a sudden you got mine on. Ugh. That's still kind of bollocks, if you ask me. I wish there was a different way to do this. Um, I wish, to be honest, I wish there was just like a one subscription for all of Twitch, like any other streaming. Like, if you think about it, if you watch more than a couple creators, you're paying more for Twitch than most people pay for Hulu or Netflix or whatever to see, you know, well, ostensibly amateurs talk about random stuff. Um, that seems like kind of a ripoff to me. I wish there was just one Twitch subscription that would give you ad-free viewing. Just click ad-free viewing. That would be cool. And you could still support your your favorite Twitch creators to like unlock emojis or get special stuff in the chat or I don't know what there could be they could come come up with some other incentive but just dumping ads on everybody all the time does not seem cool the sizzle mine is... <laughs> oh god uh, Twitch turbo I have not heard of Twitch turbo this may be a new thing that I'm not aware of I know don't charge money for every individual creator it's so rubbish especially when you know um a lot part of part of the the twitch experience is the community it's why we raid into one another it's it's because we want our viewers to watch a whole bunch of different people that we like too but then if you have to shell out for each one of them just to avoid obnoxious advertisements it doesn't make any sense twitch turbo i'm gonna have to look that up actually let's 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 take a look right now see what we can find <laughs> Because that would be a good development, in my opinion. Twitch Turbo, let's see what we got. Oh, well, hey, there you go. It looks like Twitch has already solved the issue. Add free viewing with limited exceptions. Well, there you go. Watching with Turbo means no pre-rolls, no mid-rolls, no companions. And no display ads. You may still be presented promotional ads and ads that are embedded into a broadcast. Well, I mean, of course, you can't avoid that. If I'm watching ads for whatever reason, there's no way that you could avoid that part. Uh, and then in rare situations, delivered with certain simulcast content. So I guess like a really high, I, I'm sure that only applies to like upper echelon streamers who are doing like, you know, the premium content or whatever. Interesting. Represent Twitch Turbo proudly with an exclusive Twitch badge. Wow. Expanded emote emote set. Okay, so you get custom chat username colors. Wow. You can already customize your username color, but okay. Uh, extended broadcast storage. Okay, so it's uh, nine bucks a month. So there you go. If you tend to watch even three Twitch streamers um, on the regular, it seems like a pretty good deal to not have to look at ads for any one of them. So that's good to know about. Thanks for uh, thanks for bringing that up, Port Nickel. <laughs> so that's a, so. There's another option for you, James. If you don't want to shell out for each one of us, because I know you've gotten into a bunch of streamers since you have moved over here to Twitch from. The, the boomer hellscapes of, of Facebook. Um, that's, that's another way. I wonder where that... I guess that money just goes directly to Bezos, though. So I guess there's that. But I don't really want people to have to watch ads. So I guess 
in terms of that trade-off, you know, the pacing of the show and all that sort of thing, I suppose that's okay. Yeah, that'd be great for the music channels for sure. I'm to blame for you being on. I am to blame. I actually left his karaoke night, and then the nature of, of of Twitch is is to blame for you being on Twitch, right? Because for those of you who are not in the know, every fourth Friday of the month we do a leftist karaoke night here on this channel. It is live stream only because of the nature of algorithms and copyright strikes and stuff like that. Because you can set up Twitch so it doesn't store your VOD, there's nothing for the algorithm to go look at later on. You can you can do copyright stuff as long as it's live and not saved. And so that's what we've been doing every fourth Friday, you know. Um, have people on, they sing, I sing, we have a good time. James requests Led Zeppelin <laughs> most of the time um, and other classic rock sort of stuff, which I, I, I usually oblige eventually. He wears me down. Um, so that's, but that's why you had to come on to Twitch because I wasn't, I was not broadcasting to Facebook or, or YouTube or any of the other places. Because I use Restream, so I am out on two Facebook channels right now, Twitch, YouTube, and Twitter. Although, I don't really know how many people watch me on Twitter. I'm maybe trying to set it up with, with Telegram, because they just came out with that for Restream. But I am so unfamiliar with Telegram and what it's even used for that I don't know. I don't really even know how to set that up. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's Stealth Karaoke. There you go. That's a good way to, to, to put it. But it's a fun time. Whether you like to sing, whether you like to cheer in the audience, we've had some great audience participation. That's the main reason that I keep doing it, even. Um, you know, let me, so you can actually see what, I, what I, I'm looking like here. Um, that's the main reason I keep doing it, because the past couple of episodes, just people have, through their schedules, you know, Friday tends to be a busy time. So, you know, don't, uh, don't fault people for that. But because of connection issues and and uh, people just being busy with other stuff. We've only had like one or two other singers each time. So I've been kind of having to sing quite a lot, which is, is fine. It's a little bit hard on the voice, um, but, but there you go. Thank you so much, James. I appreciate that a lot. I was super nervous the first time I did it because that was literally the first time I've ever done karaoke, like ever. I've never done it at a bar, at a, at a restaurant or, or any social gathering, no weddings, nothing. That was the first time so it's fun it's fun you know it's not like you have to have a golden throat to participate i like to our, our motto here is uh if you can hum you can sing so let's take that for what it is um we welcome all kinds we are very supportive and encouraging of, of everyone who has the courage to get up and and sing in front of people they don't know <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, James. I appreciate that a lot, bud. Ah, how are things going out in, in your neck of the woods? We, we haven't been hearing much about uh, Mansion since DeSantis and Greg Abbott have been pulling their their human trafficking stunts. So, But I imagine things are, are still rolling along. The, the coal and gas are greasing the wheels of, of <laughs> democracy out there, so-called democracy. <laughs> Um, yeah, absolutely. I agree, Part Nickel. Character is not about being good. It's about, you know, just doing it, having fun, being in a supportive community, and just doing something you love. Like, I like singing. One of my favorite parts about when I used to work for FedEx was I would be alone for, you know, six, eight hours a day. And um, still, Hillbilly Coal Land. Uh, good, good to hear. <laughs> Sarcastic. Um, anyway, so when I, when I was working for FedEx, I'd, I'd be alone, like away from people for most of the time. So I could just belt out any old song I wanted, um, make up songs, do whatever. And it was fun. It was like, you know, just goofing off by yourself basically. But then they started installing cameras and they claimed it was for the driver's safety because, uh, you know, they had a rash of, of thefts, people just coming up onto the, the FedEx truck into steel and stuff and uh so they they put in cameras both forward facing for accidents um but then facing the driver and i'm thinking 
if it's really about driver safety and identifying thieves and stuff like that, why does it face the driver? Why doesn't it face the door? You know, that door that supposedly everyone's coming up in and just waiting to ambush us and, and all this stuff. Um, but I mean, it's not like we had a union, so there's nothing we could really do to fight it. What are we going to individually say, oh, please no camera for my truck? No. Um, so at that point, you know, I don't care what job you have. If you have a camera pointing in your face and you are aware of that camera, like it's always in your field of vision and you know that, that people are right. Exactly. Oof. No, thank you. That's right. Port nickel. Um, but if you know that people are like, could be watching over your shoulder, like your boss, like, I mean, it's one thing to stream. I know this camera's here. I intentionally put it there. This is, this is my choice to, to have you all watch whatever dumb stuff I, I come up with. Um, that's a little different than it being your work, like something where people could fire you if, you know, you do something wrong. And, um, and it was interesting because the videos, they, every Monday was a, was a training video and you had to watch the training video for you before you could log in. And it was always just this, like, don't forget to wear a seatbelt and like crap like this. It's very obvious, but like they obviously paid someone to, take the time to edit together videos to to make for this this training stuff but but regardless they would have a lot of them where it would be like don't forget to wear a seatbelt here's a driver who wasn't wearing a seatbelt and look they crashed and they like fell out of the truck or like they, they just they they ended up in the in the cargo part or, or you know all these things um it was never graphic or anything like that but still clearly a big part of the video uh, video camera in your face was to cover your ass if there was like a workers comp claim or um if for whatever reason you were cited for something like cited for not having your seatbelt by a police officer they'd be like oh yep you're uh, you're on the hook and we're not liable so that was uh it was funny how things changed like that and like who's gonna say anything about that so th so they put in that camera and then they put in cameras on the side which were even more obnoxious because if you've ever done a delivery job, I mean, this is not just Amazon drivers, but if you've ever done a delivery job and you're out in the suburbs for hours a day or like rural areas, like when I was working uh, out of a further out office, I was out in, in, in the country most of the time. Like I would spend 90% of my time just driving stop to stop at these little farmhouses and stuff like that. There's not exactly a bathroom around. So it's not just a matter of oh well, they're working you too hard though they are because the way they have it set up is that you get paid per stop meaning the more stops you do the more the faster you get through the stops the more per hour you're actually making so you have an incentive to go fast 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 it's it's the, like the sonic uh cudgel to to get you going gotta go fast fast right um so anyway so so if you're you if every moment that you're not delivering means you're ostensibly losing money you're going to have to go fast and you can't take the time to go 20 minutes out of your way to find some little fly spec town and hope that their one gas station is open so you can use the restroom so i mean i i had a a bottle that i would bring out i would bring an empty bottle with me just in case and you know failing that um, I'd have to stop somewhere, but with cameras on the sides of the vehicle then too, then you have to be even more strategic about where you go. So, cause I'll be damned if that was going to be the reason that I was going to get fired for peeing on the, the company camera or something like that. No, thank you. So yeah, but it, that is the reality of the job. And interestingly enough, that was not the reality of the job, um, as much, uh, I suppose it did still happen, but not nearly as much with the postal service. When I worked at the postal service, they had a union. So you didn't get paid by the house. You didn't get paid by the package. You got paid by the hour. And you better believe that I would go out of my way in a neighborhood to go to the bathroom and, and take the break that I needed to take. Um, interesting how that works, union versus non-union setting. Um, so... That was definitely, I mean, the postal service was great. I would probably, I would almost 
mm, I wouldn't say almost certainly, but there'd be a, a much bigger chance that I'd still be at that job if they didn't work the newbies so hard. Like, I literally got one random weekday off a week, and that was it. Um, and then during, like, Christmas season, forget it. Like, you were pulling 12-hour shifts, 14-hour um, shifts, I think. I think I think 14 was probably my longest shift that I did because um, there was just so much stuff to get out and then you have to go help other drivers who are behind and they really just stick it to them and you would do like you'd have to deliver Amazon on Sundays and the postal service is open on on Saturdays so you better believe all the the people with the most tenure took those Saturdays off regularly and then the newbies the grunts they got stuck doing the weekend work so it wasn't perfect even though it was union I got paid a hell of a lot more than, than at um, Amazon or at, at, at FedEx. I worked both of those jobs, delivery. Um, but, but yeah, um, it was just too much. Like, I had no, I had young kids. I was, I was feeling like I was losing out on a lot of their milestones in their life because my one day a week, I, I just have to recuperate because, of course, I got the worst walking routes too. They, they transferred me to a station with walking routes. I started out at one that was just motorized, got transferred to one that had walking routes. And then that's another thing. You don't have a say, you get assigned to what, what station you go to as long as it's in, I guess, a reasonable distance from your home. But anyway, so they, they needed more help with that, that, uh, that other station that had walking routes. And the walking route I went to, they couldn't keep anyone on because it was literally, I, and I would track my steps it was literally 10 miles of walking every day and that's just as they say through hail through sleet through snow through dark of night all that stuff that that literally was not an impediment i had to keep pressing on even if i was late even if i was you know even if i missed houses and you know they're like just keep going um that was tough that was tough work so my one day a week that i had to recover i was just physically, my, you know, my feet were recuperating, rebuilding themselves for the, the, the next week to come. But, yeah, give and take on that. Because I, I found out through having to fill in for, through, for other regulars who had routes from time to time. Eventually they moved me over to that, so I was kind of like the fill-in guy. Um, I found out that the routes were wildly different. And some of them... You know, you cruise through, you get done at like two o'clock in the afternoon, you go home, that's it. You're done. And some of them were like mine, where you'd walk 10 miles. Uh, just no rhyme or reason to a lot of it. But anyway, enough about the postal service. Let's get into the the video of the night. We are, once again, we're, we're looking at Howard Zinn's A People's History of the United States. We've covered a lot of really gruesome, horrible, gory stuff. And uh, the hits are just going to keep on coming because we are getting into broken treaties. So we, we just talked about women's suffrage and the early suffragettes and how those were off topic, still topic. Thank you, James. <laughs> uh, anyway, we, we talked about the early suffragette movements that were crushed. We, we learned about... Oh, colonialism. We learned about how the people that were basically pressed, cajoled into the Revolutionary War, the, the working class, were given all sorts of promises that, that were never fulfilled in order to get them to join up. They thought that they were going to throw off all the chains of their oppressors, but they, they just threw off the most upper echelon of oppressors to be ruled essentially the same way by the moneyed class, the capitalist class. So we've covered a lot of ground in this, and I really encourage you all to go back and look at the, the archives if you missed any episodes. Um, hold on. I want to make sure that I'm able to monitor the chat while I'm in video mode. There we go. Shoot, I've been I've been missing some comments. Sorry about that. I don't I'm not sure what you're referring to there, Pork Nickel. What if you can't just go outside like easily? 
not sure. They, and James says, I think they listed under Tallywalker out next to Van during dispatch. Okay. Oh, man. Sorry I've been missing the chats. I've been caught up in my own wreck and touring and such. Anyway, let's get to the video. <laughs> really, this is enough rambling. So here we go. Fresh new chapter. Chapter 7. Coming in hot. This uh, The title of this chapter is as long as grass grows or water runs. Kind of ominous. <laughs> uh, it's okay, James. I do appreciate your participation. This recording is a product of Audio Anarchy. Let me know if you a can't see the caption. History of the United Sorry. States. I'll pause that. By Howard. Sorry. Let me know if the, the captions are too small, you want me to change anything, you want me to speed it up, slow it down. We've been going at 1.25 speed. If that sounds too weird to any of you, we can certainly slow it to, to normal pace. This guy is an entertaining, I, I assume it's a guy, I don't actually know. The, the person who's reading the, the audiobook is very entertaining, uh, likes to do all the voices um, of different people, and he especially does good ones for the rich and well-to-do, so, so stay tuned for that. Words in. Chapter 7. As long as grass grows or water runs. If women of all the subordinate groups in a society dominated by rich white males were closest to home, indeed in the home, the most interior, then the Indians were the most foreign, the most exterior. Women, because they were so near and so needed, were dealt with more by patronization than by force. The Indian, not needed, indeed an obstacle, could be dealt with by sheer force, except that sometimes the language of paternalism preceded the burning of village. I see what you're saying there, Park Nickel. Uh, you lack the equipment to be able to pee outside easily. Okay. Without going into the woods? Okay. So, um... If I'm reading you right here, uh, what you're saying is you, you can't just stand and, and, and do it. <laughs> that's, that's not really a possibility. Well, you're in luck because on, on either side of the door to the, um, the, the FedEx truck or whatever delivery truck, there are handles. So as long as you're in a you know, desolated, desolate area where there's, there's no one around, you can just lean back <laughs> and if you have enough clearance, you're not going to get anything on yourself. So that is uh, that is how I've been told uh, that happens uh, because there, I mean there were, there were uh, female drivers and and I assume they had the same sorts of needs that that I do. Um, so that that's how they got around that. I yeah. That's yeah. Just leave it at that. <laughs> Uh, rich white males are most of America's issues, and they have been, as we've seen through this entire book. Rich white guys and their fragile, 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 fragile egos who would rather start the transatlantic slave trade rather than lift a finger to help out in Jamestown Colony, who would, uh, you know, lean the stream, there you go, um, uh, who... Uh, we're so afraid of, of poor natives, poor black people, and, and poor white people banding together that they introduced race, <laughs> like the entire concept of race, and, and then henceforth racism. Yes, rich white men, just as a concept, are, are responsible for most of, if not, if not almost all of America's systemic issues, for sure. And so, Indian removal, as it has been politely called, cleared the land for white occupancy between the Appalachians and the Mississippi, cleared it for cotton in the south and grain in the north, for expansion, immigration, canals, railroads, new cities, and the building of a huge continental empire clear across to the Pacific Ocean. The cost in human life 
cannot be accurately measured, in suffering not even roughly measured. Most of the history books given to children pass quickly over it. Are you coming for us? Yes. Okay. Looks like Amanda is going to join us. I was, I was hoping she would, but she's been uh, cleaning the house. It's important for my culture to close my fitness rings. Yes, for your culture, huh? Yeah. What culture would that be? Khaki shorts, Apple watches, and tiki torches. Oh, tiki torches. That's not a good cultural signifier. That's kind I didn't, of, I didn't that's, say I wasn't trashy. Well, that's kind of been co-opted by the alt-right, if you didn't know. Fine. Glow lights for your yard. Sure. Solar, solar panel uh, tchotchkes and, and gazing balls and crap like that. Oh, yeah. Crystal, crystal balls. Oh, James says it's about time you showed up. Yeah. Did Zach tell you what we saw the other day at the farmer's market, James? I did. I went into great detail. I had to tell it, like, twice because James got a commercial right as I was telling it the first time. Well, I mean, that's important to his culture to know. Yeah. That we met a pepperoni roll. Yes, we did. IRL. Hey, can you turn that ear on? <sighs> <laughs> this this is the price, folks, of, of having Amanda on the stream, is that you will hear a, a low rumble of our air conditioning uh, unit because she I'm is... worth it. She's a furnace, and uh, she does not quit for the stream. So. Too legit. Too legit to quit. Just kidding. I'm a human uh, furnace. Uh, Zach hates sharing a bed with me. That's why we had to get a bigger bed. We had to get a bigger bed because literally, if I if I was up against her at all, it would just be like Satan is is lightly roasting you. I don't know if you know this, Zach, but I'm actually a port key to hell. <laughs> I was wondering where those were. I, I'm not even I'm not even a person. No, you're just a port key. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. It's amazing I've never just touched you in the right way that you like. I mean, it's a very complicated sequence. Um, so earlier, Amanda, we were talking about how one relieves themselves if they are, say, a FedEx driver out in the middle of nowhere and don't have the equipment to just stand and, and deliver. I know how. Yeah. You save your plastic bottles from your last trip to Quick Trip. Okay. And you... So how do, how do you vagina havers perform? They have a different... Yes. I think Allie just brought, brought that up. Uh, unless unless a person has a urinal with all attachments, it can be handy. <laughs> like, they have a ladies one that's a little wider, you know, because yeah. there's a lot more going on down there, and you just, yeah. you just drop trow and help. Yep. And I was saying, the you know, as, as Park Nickel so eloquently put it, put it, the old lean and stream, and you grab on the handles, and you just swing your, swing your butt out. You just have what? There. Make sure that no one's around, or if I guess if you don't care, then you just uh, you do what you got to do. See, I just yell, "Look at it! Look at my pasty ass!" And then people do, and then they're blinded, and they regret ever yep. listening to your commands. Yep. All it takes is one time to learn. Right. Unless it's at, at night, and then they think a ghost is peeing out of the side. <laughs> Ghosts are incredible. Yeah, brisk tea bottles sometimes, and then tell other dude that not to drink it because it's not tea, it's tea pee. <laughs> James will be here all week. I love it. Don't forget to tip your waitresses. Hey, can I take your order? You done been sitting at my table for the last 15 minutes. I'm gonna need you to speed it up. This ain't no Starbucks, sir. Ah, uh, so I'm sure James will again remind us off topic is still topic. Off topic. But we're only, we're literally only less than two minutes into the chapter. So I was hoping maybe we could proceed. Will that be okay? Will that be okay? What do you think? Okay, I'm just going to do it. Statistics tell the story. We find I those in Michael Rosen's fathers and children. In 1790, there were 3,900,000 Americans, and most of them lived within 50 miles of the Atlantic Ocean. 
By 1830, there were 13 million Americans, and by 1840, 4,500,000 had crossed the Appalachian Mountains into the Mississippi Valley. That huge expanse of land crisscrossed by rivers flowing into the Mississippi from east and west. In 1820, 120,000 Indians lived east of the Mississippi. By 1844, fewer than 30,000 were left. Most of them had been forced to migrate westward, but the word force cannot convey what happened. Here we go. In the More Revolutionary War, almost every important Indian nation At fought on the side of the British. Of the, the British signed for peace and went home. The Indians were already home. And so, they continued fighting the Americans on the frontier in a set of desperate holding operations. Washington's war-enfeebled militia could not drive them back. After scouting forces were demolished one after the other, he tried to follow a policy of conciliation. His Secretary of War, Henry Knox, said, quote, The Indians being the prior occupants possess the right of the soil, unquote. His Secretary of State, Thomas Jefferson, said in 1791 that where Indians lived within state boundaries, they should not be interfered with, and that the government should remove white settlers who tried to encroach on them. But, Hold up. as whites can... So, certain whites can corner the natives, and that's okay. But then we're going to give them their own little hidey hole and like, you got to be here. Nobody can come in here. Who's giving who a hidey hole? What? I didn't miss the hidey hole part. So he was just talking about how Washington was giving natives certain areas within. Yeah, because his, his troops were too, too depleted. They couldn't just keep fighting. Maybe take a fucking hit. Yeah. Maybe try and live with the people instead? I don't, I don't know. Treat probably, them like human beings? We'd probably be way better off now. <laughs> Not just try to steal their land? Use all the parts of the animal? Yeah. Well, Treat others with too. respect? That too. We are stronger together than we are separate. We are a community. All parts are important. No. Very true. Only me. I'm important. Says the top six. I need a tax break. Yeah. I guess I guess that's what it comes down to. Just because I'm smart enough doesn't mean I should have to pay for everybody else. <laughs> oh, yeah. I already do your service to the world as job creator. So. I'm a job coach. You are a job coach, so. Like, you're more of a job creator than the job creators. Boom. Wow. Take that, Bezos continued to move westward, the pressure on the national government increased. By the time Jefferson became president in 1800, there were 700,000 white settlers west of the mountains. They moved into Ohio, Indiana, Illinois in the north, into Alabama and Mississippi in the south. These whites outnumbered the Indians about eight to one. Jefferson now committed the federal government to promote future removal of the Creek and the Cherokee from Georgia, aggressive activity against the Indians mounted in the Indiana Territory under Governor William Henry Harrison. When Je aren't, aren't you loving all these founding fathers and, and how wise and committed they are to justice and truth and fairness and all this crap? Bullshit. <laughs> yeah, right. Definitely. No, they're horrible, tyr tyrannical people that view natives as subhuman, so. But I mean, come on, it just perpetuates the now we live in. Like, oh, those people are different from me, I don't like it. Instead of saying, hey, those people are different than me, I should go talk to them. Right, yeah, might actually learn something. They might actually be a human on your same level, capable of rational thought, just like you. Right, well, not everybody's so, yeah, the but, same. I mean, that, that should show everyone next time that, that some idiotic uh, right-winger gets in your face about, oh, well, next you're going to be turned on statues to Washington and Jefferson. Be like, good. Good. We should stop worshipping these, these long-dead people who, with their backwards ideas who, who didn't even consider that, that black people might be autonomous human beings that, that were eager to remove natives so the more civilized white man could uh, take what's his manifest destiny. You know, all this junk. These people More were like gross, and us. and sure they might have had some some pretty words at one time, but 
kind of seems like on balance they were not about freedom they were not about liberty they were not about the pursuit of happiness unless you fit a very specific cast which was rich white male and that's and that's it that's how they set up this country as, as we've learned in previous chapters that was the explicit intent of the constitution was to protect property aka the people that own property um the property class or the capitalist class above everything else cool you just vibing i'm reading <coughs> you know what jimmy carter's the shit and you know when he was president he handed over his peanut farms like he was supposed to and he took them back later like he was allowed to I love that idea, Pork Nickel. Replace all the statues of Mr. Rogers. Yeah, an actual positive male role model. And, and stuff Bob like Ross. Bob Ross. And LeVar the Burton. Burton. <laughs> um, oh, you know, shit, let's find the guy. People that actually did real things uh, with their lives that, that, that impacted people positively. Harriet Tubman. Um, you know... Wednesday Adams. <laughs> sure. Wednesday Adams would definitely be an improvement over Thomas Jefferson. Tom Baker? I don't know who Tom Baker is. And I apologize. <clears throat> Travis Barker? Just kidding. Travis Barker? I'm just kidding. Wait. The guys from Rammstein? Sure. That'd be cool. I mean, I, yeah, sure. I would take fictional characters over that or... or Nick or... Offerman? Dolly Parton. Dolly Dolly Parton would be a great statue to have up instead of like Plus, ima imagine a, a petition to replace some Confederate general statue with the statue of Dolly Parton. Who's gonna oppose that? Right. Also, if it's anatomically correct also, and that thing topples yeah. over, that could take someone out. Yeah. And hopefully someone bad. Hopefully someone bad. Yeah. Death by concrete that knockers. <clears throat> Fourth, the twelve foot scarf. What about Nick Offerman? Oh, Doctor Who. Okay. Yeah, sure. Doctor Who statue. I would definitely be in favor of that over like that William Bedford Forster. Although that one, quick diversion here. That one kind of should stay up just for its uh, unintentional irony and and. <laughs> Steve Irwin. Yeah. Uh, Let's let's look up the, the, the statue of William Bedford Forrester. Jim Henson. The four horsemen of wholesomeness. Yeah, all right. Definitely could use some non white and, and non male people in there, but for sure, yeah. Oh here it is. Ah. What I the fuck? Wait. <laughs> wait. That's no, no, no. This one is can, real. This is real. It. This is real. Hold on. I don't want your cookies. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I make really good cookies. Here we go. You, I, I guarantee y'all are not ready for this if you've not seen it. This, this is like, I don't know if he's second in command to Jefferson Davis or, or just the leader of the Virginia Company. Some great, you know, Confederate general. Uh, Nathan Bedford Forrest statue. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, I don't want a free book. Oh, Keanu Reeves. Can we add Keanu Reeves? I would love a Keanu Reeves. But just look at that. Look at that craftsmanship. <laughs> that that human-like proportion. No one can turn those, their head that those far. Those eyes, you can't you can't escape his gaze. He's looking in too many directions. <clears throat> Get them! Like, you're assuming from that angle that his peripherals are real good because that gun's pointed backwards. Does he I know, know like, that he's shooting? Is, is he running away as he's shooting? Um, Did he get shot in the leg? It looks like he's got a gunshot in the leg. I, I'm hoping that's just someone who shot the statue. <laughs> Why is part of it gold and part of it silver? That's a good question too. Why is his horse? He was he was buried with his horse, by the way. Like, what a weirdo! 
Maybe he had a special relationship with I that mean, horse. I mean, he's looking like he's pretty happy to be on that horseback right now. He's like, hey there, big fella. Well, we got, we got a war to fight. Usually the other way around. <laughs> Lightning and thunder. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that one, okay. We can keep up that one. <laughs> but everything else that, that doesn't show how ridiculous white supremacy is... Um, <laughs> it's, it's permanently closed. Oh no! When was this written? <laughs> I'm kind of disappointed that I can never see this in person now. I think you're gonna be okay. <clears throat> so here's General Nathan Bedford Forrest. Bill rare Wright. example of a Confederate monument that, rather than being <laughs> sculpted with dignity and grace, accurately reflects the ugliness of its subject. However, this was not the intent of the sculptor, Jack Kershaw, who is primarily known for defending the assassination of Mar Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, when he put it up in plain view of Tennessee's Highway 65. He was supposed to be a sincere homage to all that he stood for, running away... <laughs> Being scared, firing wildly, and having alien proportions. Oh, oh that's right. Uh, he was also the first Grand Wizard of the KKK. Just, uh... You're a wizard! Just a, yeah. Not the cool kind, though. Alright, that's... That's enough. I know, you can't close the outside. Maybe they put, like, um, a fence around it or something. I don't know how you permanently close it without just destroying it. Maybe they destroyed it. Maybe that's how it was permanently closed. That's the euphemism. Sorry, the statue didn't permanently close. They're going to have it melted down into <clears throat> liquid magma. <laughs> it's probably not even real gold or silver, either. It's probably some cheap imitation metal. It's bronze. Probably bronze, yeah. But then what's the silver thing? Pewter! Pre yeah, bronze and pewter. There you go. Bronze and pewter. Bronze and pewter. We can't afford better stuff. Oh, wow. That was, that was a good little diversion. But, uh, back to the, the thing. Okay, so more about... It's bedtime. Sorry. It's 8.14. Why do you have that set for bedtime? Are you just going to keep creeping our bedtime forward and forward? Is this is this how, you know, middle age is going to go for us? Just every every night, one minute sooner? Am I middle aged? I mean, you, I guess you're not quite yet. I definitely am, though. I turned 40 See? this year, y'all, and I'm yeah. oh so happy about it. In, like, it. about six weeks, guys, so if you're thinking about <clears throat> some you're thinking special of, guy... You're thinking of something special for me. Subscribe. Uh, but Tell others to really, subscribe. As I, as I said Friday night, my reaching 40 is like immeasurably, I'm in an immeasurably better place than I was at 30. I have a loving wife who I enjoy being around and get along with. That's why he's laughing. <laughs> um, I just, I'm laughing just because of the contrast to the, yeah. Herp a derp. You don't got to say it like that, but yes, <laughs> my ex-wife. Um, I am, you know pretty close to getting a house i have a, a job that i'm proud of that i love doing landscaping and, and doing a lot of design work um so yeah things are much better at, at turning almost 40 or almost turning 40 than they were at almost turning 30 because at 30 let's see i was working at tse which was a good job i was transportation for people with disabilities so the job itself was good although it paid like crap and it was a split shift and it was a dead end job. It was never going to go anywhere. Um, never going to go nowhere. This job already has gotten places. I've been promoted uh, from when I started working there. So, yeah, things going good here. <clears throat> Getting old does suck in many ways. My knees, you know, that's it is not a joke. <laughs> All the memes they have about, you know, turning 40 and your knees just hey, being like crap. That's why we hike. That that's is, that is that's a good poles. reason we hike, yeah. And I can teach you some of my secret exercises. I'm, I'm waiting to see Just, this, like, Krav Maga style exercises. I would encourage you folks to stay away from crunches, though, because I just tried to do some, and I think I might have a hernia. 
I don't think you can get a hernia just from sitting up. I don't know. It hurt pretty bad. <laughs> I think you're just wailing too hard on your abs, babe. <sighs> That's right. Anyway, let's get back to uh, learning just how magnificent the, the founding fathers were. Let's hear some more. Jefferson doubled the size of the nation by purchasing the Louisiana Territory from France in 1803, France, France thus extending the western frontier from the Appalachians the across the Mississippi to the Rocky Mountains. He thought the Indians could move there. He proposed to Congress that Indians should be encouraged to settle down on smaller tracts and do farming. Also, they should be encouraged to trade with whites, to incur debts, and then to pay off these debts with tracts of land. Quote. Wow, that's an interesting scheme that he was is setting up. So he wants them to go onto these lands. He wants to, to force them into desperate situations so they incur debt. Hmm, what could that society be reminiscent of? College! Uh, college! Yeah, that's really what comes to mind for me. And then be able to extract concessions from them, like that land. Although, you know, you don't get land for going to college, so you don't even have no, that much to start with. you're not allowed to buy it after um, you go to college. But... And then just take the land and leave them with nothing. Cool. What, a, what an outstanding, honorable man uh, Jefferson was. But so, so instead today, they, they, I mean, that still works as a great way to ensnare people. And, and get them basically into your servitude forever so that they don't cause too much trouble or ever threaten your, your place of power because they're too busy scrambling to survive and to service the debt that you have forced them into taking on. But just so you know, leftists, as long as we remain united and we continue to be united, we can rise. Yeah, I agree. Like that, the that... mighty sourdough loaf will rise. And continue to rise. <laughs> That's right. Until we've baked. We're, we're going to ferment right. descent. Yeah. <laughs> that meant that to be kind of cool. And like. Yeah, yeah, but then then you had to just make a joke of the whole thing. It was, it was getting too serious, huh? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Humor's how I cope with my world, okay? Hey, uh, and you know, James, I've had a beard since... 2002-ish. So. And if he ever shaves it off, hey, I'm probably you know, gonna run away. What, I should probably set a subscription goal. You know, if I get like 100 subscribers, I'll shave my beard. Think of the money, though! I could buy like five beards. Fine. I guess if that's he... never gonna be a subscription goal. No, fine. It's your face... Listen, look at me. And you're right, Alios, with home equity loans. Good, good point as well. You can shave your beard. I just need adequate warning. And I just a need to, of you to plan before. my two weeks vacation for the time when you're growing that thing back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like I don't, I don't want to look at you. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to know about you. <laughs> you will wear a face cloth. Uh, a veil. Yep, you will wear a man veil. A man veil. And, uh, that's right. Anyway. Because. So, yeah, so, cool. Jefferson, in, a scheme to enslave people with debt and then fleece them of the land that he promised them in the first place. What a guy! Let's put him on a mountain. Let's blast apart. In fact, let's take one of the most sacred uh, uh, hills around the, the, was it the, the Seven Fathers. Uh, let me look I that up know. quick. The Seven Whores of Babylon. Was the sacred <laughs> site of the Native American people? I don't no. think so. No. That was in poor taste, Bear. It was. I'm sorry. Um. Why couldn't we have left it alone? Korean fruit jam with no added sugar. Okay, let's see. Oh, it was, it was called the it was called the Six Grandfathers, and it was a very sacred space to. Uh, let me see which people. The, mm, 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 the the Lakota. 
known as the Six Grandfathers, and they just blasted apart to put in images of the very people that, that robbed them and fleeced them of their lands and, and pushed them out by gun uh, and just all around treated them like subhumans. Like, oh. Isn't that nice? Mount what a great <laughs> What a great national legacy we have. Maybe we should recreate Mount Rushmore. Do you want to be on Mount Rushmore? Oh, I've seen those beanies with the knitted beards on. What if I did that? It would be a prosthetic beard until I could, uh... Okay, fine. I guess that I... Uh, no, sorry, poor nickel. That's a no-go. How about maybe you could dye it a crazy color? Okay. Is, is that... Would that be a good goal? Yeah. So if I, if I can get 100 subscribers... And I got three so far, so only 97 to go. I will dye my beard. I'll, I'll put a poll in the chat what color I should dye it. And then I will, I will do it. Deal, folks. I just, I'm not ready for him to shave it. It's okay. It's okay. Let's, let's make our own Mount Rushmore. You, you're just afraid that you're going to find I don't have a chin under there. It's just a fist. Like Chuck Norris. Yeah, that's what I'm scared of. <laughs> I didn't do the stupidest stuff for picture day today. She's like, Crane your head really far and then like, like Did it look like a turtle looking up yeah. for your lunch? <laughs> yeah. I'm a, ba I'm a baby coming out the birth canal. <laughs> I'm Mitch McConnell. That's what I thought of. <laughs> I was like, okay, what would Mitch do? Whoa, uh, I says, I says. Uh, no, <laughs> that's what I said. Hey, that's not the voice. It's Chuck. That's Chuck. Neon Green. I like it. Yeah! Zach Explosion. That's a great name, by the way. Welcoming. Covering, you covering the... you do a duet and you could be the saxophones. Okay. I... Okay. You're welcome. We're not always this loopy. If you're, if you're new to the channel here. It's almost bedtime for me, guys. Yeah. It's basically like me being drunk. I'm just really tired. Okay. Well, let's let's try to get more than five minutes into the chapter. How about we? Yeah, Two measures are deemed like expedient. Well, First, to encourage them to abandon hunting. Secondly, to multiply trading houses among them, leading them thus to agriculture, to manufacturers, and civilization. Jefferson. So, so create a market and then oversaturate it so that, that it's no longer sustainable, forcing a portion of them to try another trade, i.e. agriculture, that they can then manipulate the price from, let's, let's see where it goes from there, where this, this, this long con of Jefferson's goes. Jefferson's talk well, of agriculture, agriculture manufacturers, that? civilization is crucial. Indian Coast. removal was huh? necessary for the opening of the vast American lands to agriculture, to commerce, to markets, to money, to the development of the modern capitalist economy. Land was indispensable for all this, and after the revolution, huge sections of land were brought up by rich speculators, including George Washington and Patrick Henry. In North Carolina, rich tracts of land belonging to the Chickasaw Indians were put on sale, although the Chickasaws were among the few Indian tribes fighting on the side of the revolution, and a treaty had been signed with them guaranteeing their land. Hmm. John Donaldson, a state surveyor. Spoiler alert. Well, actually, I don't know for sure, but considering the way that this book has gone, I'm pretty confident that the Chickasaw are not going to get what they bargained for. Bayer ended up with 20,000 acres of land near what is now Chattanooga. His son-in-law made 22 <laughs> trips out of Nashville in 1795 yeah, they, they for land be. deals. This was Andrew Jackson. Oh God, we've come to America's shittiest president in history, Andrew fucking Jackson. One of the most racist people that we've, we've ever decided to put on a dollar, on a, on a denomination of money. Andrew Jackson. DT gets on one. Um. Uh. Yeah. yeah the D the architect of the Trail of Tears. Um. Absolutely hated everyone who was not white. Thought white people were basically the only humans. This this man. 
deserves to, to have his legacy wiped from the face of the earth. Does he need to be mussolini Yeah, definitely. Let's, let's dig up his coffin and do it again. A horrible monster of a person. His so, bones are so, probably so strap in. Too. I would help after this, but, you know, considering that he's probably made of pure evil, perhaps not. Perhaps no corruption will even touch him. <laughs> Here we go. Jackson was a land speculator, merchant, slave trader, and the most... Ag land speculator, a.k.a. a rent seeker. Someone who looks for cheap-ass land that's going to go up in price later, then sits on it. Doesn't improve it. Doesn't provide anything of value to society, just waits until the price is right, then cashes in. That's what a land speculator is, and they still exist today. That's, that's what you know, freaking BlackRock is doing, buying up houses across the country, because they know that there's a, a better chance of them going up than, say, you know, playing the stock market or putting your money in other financial investment tools. Well, that's what these big housing corporations are doing, too. That, like, that's just what I, that's what I was saying. That's what BlackRock is one of those housing corporations uh, buying up properties everywhere. Just to see the number go up, line go up, so we can sell. So they provide nothing. They're just a middle person, like a ticket scalper. or They put minimal effort into repairing these homes and making them livable. Oh, yeah. They they're just, they're just like, ready to flip it. Will fail inspection the, after inspection. Sure. Just do the minimum needed to, to sell it under law and disclose only the minimum under law. And, uh, yeah, reap the benefits. Big Maybe. easy money, as you say, James. Um, that's what, yeah, so anyway, so this is Jackson. Lovely human so far, right? Aggressive enemy of the Indians in early American history. He became a hero of the War of 1812, which was not, as usually depicted in American textbooks, just a war against England for survival, but a war for the expansion of the new nation into Florida, into Canada, into Indian territory. Tecumseh, a Shawnee chief and noted orator, tried to unite the Indians against white invasion. Quote, this way, and the only way, to check and to stop this evil is for all the Redmen to unite in claiming a common and equal right in the land, as it was at first and should be yet, for it was never divided, but belongs to all for the use of each. That no part... Oh, you're getting an ad. I, I will stop it there for you, Port Nickel. So... Let's talk about stuff while the commercial runs. How many seconds? It's probably 10 seconds. No, they've, they've been running long blocks of ads lately on Twitch. And there's now, as, as we were discussing earlier, there's now a, a turbo Twitch. So for, for nine bucks a month, you can get ad previewing on all the channels. Ooh. So, I was saying, you know, if you're someone who's subscribing to a, at least three streamers, and you're doing it primarily to... Oh, you can go 9-9 right now? Okay. Um, and if you're doing it primarily just to avoid the ads, that might be a better route for you. Or just in general, if you really just hate Twitch ads. Because I understand. Because ads are trash and they're in a way uh, to exploit the American people. Right. Uh, hey, let's, fun fact about ads. You know what? Let's look up ads right now. Let's see how much I have made from ads. Zero dollars. Well, it's pretty damn close. Hey guys, you want to know something cool about commercials, but it's not really cool at all, it's just disappointing. Uh, we're the only country in the world that advertises medications. Okay, I thought that was cool. That's pretty cool. It's not cool, like, in a positive way, though. It just tells us what kind of dumpster Ooh. fire we are. I have been rated 67 times. That's pretty great. Thank you all. That's Thank you, Ali, again for the raid earlier on. Uh, where is my settings? Um, how do I find out that part? Stream? No. Not that. It's stream. not channel. Stream, stream, stream. Affiliate?
How do you get an upgrade? I know I did not just see a mosquito in this room. Hmm. So ads. And here's my ads manager. So I don't have pre-roll ads when I run ads. Oh, I see. 30 second ad break equals 10 minute pre-roll ad free. Up to 1 minute 30 seconds ad break is 30 minute pre-roll ad free. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, here we go. Revenue share. Oh, that's my, uh, that's my share. It doesn't tell me how much I've made. Where does it tell me how much I've made? It's my sh It's, uh, it's whatever it is. It's pretty pitiful. Ah, oh, welcome back, Park Nickel. No problem. So, from 30 cents to $3.30 per hour. Yeah, wow. Sub, 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 minimum wage. That's, that's great. Uh, is this not it? Where is it? Not be rewards, not to attention. Streaming tools, no. Channel analytics, is that it? No, that's, that's, I don't think that's it. Oh, here it is. Okay. So I have earned $7.89 total. Seven dollars and two cents is from subscribers. I got three tier one subs. Whoop, whoop. No, no prime subs. So these people are actually shelling out real money, not just Bezos bucks back to me. I, <laughs> I, I have gotten thirty-seven cents in ads over the last period. Eighty-seven cents total. Uh, oh boy. How come I have not gotten any money from cheering? Well, you must have to have some minimum, because I know Ali cheers from time to time. Uh, that's it. That's it. That is the only way that I, I have. I cheer for you every day. So I made 87 cents in ads and $7 in, in paid subscribers, which thank you all very much, paid subscribers. I really appreciate it. I got to make, I got to make some more emotes and stuff. That sounds like our future you activity. Yeah, definitely. Not right now. Uh, yeah, you probably got me a couple of cents ads, so thanks, James. I appreciate it. Uh, I hope it's worth whatever they're selling ads on Twitch for. Probably hundreds of thousands of dollars. No, like what, what, what the products are. I don't even know what they run ads on anymore. I don't. I don't watch Twitch a whole lot Flesh myself because it's just not easy for me to do being out in the field and not always having great reception. Flashlight, hello, fresh. <laughs> so you got your flesh, your fresh. Uh, yeah. Farkle. Far Farkle? It's a dice game. They, you think they're selling ads for a, an outdated dice game from the 1950s or whatever? Absolutely. Probably. I played that one time with my grandma and... I was bored stiff. I'm sorry. Oh, did I just crush your, your I'm leaving. <laughs> dice child? We have never played Farkle together. Why are you getting so mad? I'm leaving. Thanks, thanks, James. That's that's high praise. You like me better than ads. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. Uh <laughs> Yeah. Fast food, movies, Amazon. Yeah, big surprise there. Military. That's gross. Suicide prevention. I can take that. Instead of sitting on your goddamn computer, why don't I... you go take the fucking ASVAB? Yeah, right. Get in the military now, okay? It's just like Call of Duty, but in real life. <laughs> Except you actually will die. You only get one life. Uh, but we won't tell you that part. You weren't supposed to say that. Forget that part. Whatever, it's part of the game. Yeah. That's how you know you're a real man. You oh, like, oh is, it, is Amanda signing off? I guess. No, you're not. Okay, I was, I was I scared. For sign off. I was scared for a second. Well, let's get get into some more trashing the founding father. It has a right chair. to sell. 
even to each other, much less to strangers, those who want all and will not do with less. Unquote. Angered when fellow Indians were induced to cede a great tract of land to the United States government, Tecumseh organized in 1811 an Indian gathering of 5,000 on the bank of the Tallapoosa River in Alabama and told them, quote, let the white race perish. They seize your land, they corrupt your women, they trample on the ashes of your dead. Yeah, Back what they actually I mean, did to Pocahontas. Yeah, was who like was like 14, by the way. 12. 12? Okay. She was 12. Yeah. Married to, to John Rolfe at 12. Yep. Sent to, to, to live in a foreign land she didn't know anyone in, and couldn't speak died. the language, and died of a disease that, that was never on her continent. Yep. Can you move it a little closer? I, I think that's about as far as it goes there. Thanks. I don't know if anyone's going to be able to hear me any, anymore. <laughs> you want to have You this? have a comfy chair. I know I have the comfy chair. You have all the power because you're a white man. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, had a Twitch ad for Twitch before. <laughs> All right. Not watch enough Twitch? Watch Twitch. You should be watching Twitch right now. What are you doing watching ads? Watch Twitch. Tweet, tweet, tweet. <laughs> That's funny. What up? Okay. Yeah, so anyway, where's the lie with what this, this native guy was saying? Back whence they came, upon a trail of blood, they must be driven. The Creeks, who occupied most of Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi, were divided among themselves. Some were willing to adopt the civilization of the white man in order to live in peace. Others, insisting on their land and their culture, were called Red Sticks. The Red Sticks in 1813 massacred 250 people at Fort Mims, whereupon Jackson's troops burned down a Creek village, killing men, women, and children. Because that's the same thing, killing military targets, and and and, but it's supposed to be fair in in warfare, versus killing everybody in a village. Yeah, including the baby makers. And including the babies. Oh, but we we care about life. Oh, look at that. We should always look to the founding fathers who always chose life and all this bullshit. Who's the life? Fuck they did. They chose their own life. Right. Choose the life. Of... I don't fight. I'm a man. Yeah. Just kidding. Jackson established the tactic of promising rewards in land and plunder. Quote, if either party, Cherokees, friendly Creeks, or whites, takes property of the Red Sticks, the property belongs to those who take it. Not all his enlisted men were yeah, enthusiastic for fighting. The there were mutinies. Property becomes whomever took it. Well, I mean that's that's largely the case. I know, but it's just it's not okay. No, it's not okay. Like land should be there for everybody. Everybody deserves a house. I like, I love your song. Thanks. It's going platinum. Obviously. Yes, the men were hungry. Their enlistment terms were up. They were tired of fighting and wanted to go home. Jackson wrote to his wife about, quote, The once brave and patriotic volunteers sunk to mere whining, complaining, seditioners, mutineers. When a 17-year-old soldier who had refused to clean up his food and threatened his officer with a gun was sentenced to death by a court-martial, Jackson turned down a plea for commutation of sentence and ordered the execution to proceed. He then walked out of earshot of the firing squad. Jackson wow. became a national hero when, in 1814, he fought the Battle of Horseshoe Bend against a thousand Creeks and killed 800 of them with few casualties on his side. His white troops had failed in a frontal attack on the Creeks, but the Cherokees with him promised governmental friendship if they joined the war, swam the river, came up behind the Creeks, and won the battle for Jackson. When the war ended, Jackson and friends of his began buying up the seized Creek lands. He got himself appointed treaty commissioner and dictated a treaty which took away half the land of the Creek Nation. Rogan says it was, quote, the single largest Indian session of Southern American land. 
It took land from Creeks who had fought with Jackson as well as those who had fought against him. And when Big Warrior, a chief of the friendly Creeks, protested, Jackson said, quote, Listen, the United States would have been justified by the great spirit had they taken all the land of the nation. Listen, the truth is the great body of the Creek chiefs and warriors did not respect the power of the United States. They thought we were an insignificant nation, that we would be overpowered by the British. They were fat with eating beef. They wanted flogging. We bleed our enemies in such cases to give them their senses." Unquote. As Rogan puts it, quote, Jackson had conquered the cream of the Creek country, and it would guarantee southwestern prosperity. He had supplied the expanding cotton kingdom with a vast and valuable acreage, unquote. Jackson's 1814... I mean, they stole the land. I don't think they were trying to rent it to those people again. They just made them leave. They, they rented it to poor white people who were then basically sharecroppers and uh, debt peons of one stripe or another. So, not even that nice treaty with the Creeks started something new and important. It granted Indians individual ownership of land, thus splitting Indian from Indian, breaking up communal land holding, bribing some with land, leaving others out. And as far as I know, this tradition continues today with inheritance, and, and that's the, the whole issue around blood quantum. You have to be such and such percentage of a, a particular uh, band or tribe, an enrolled member in order to have the, the rights of the community um, and access to land and, and, you know, a say in how it's used and all that stuff. The idea being that eventually the, 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 the people will mix with enough other people, even people from other bands and tribes, which according to law dilutes the, the, the bloodline, uh, and eventually there's just not going to be any natives left, legally speaking. So, right. so therefore, no native lands left either. I'm so far removed. Right. That I don't. I mean, it's there, but it's not enough. Yes, indeed. Introducing the competition and conniving that marked the spirit of Western capitalism. It fitted well the old Jeffersonian idea of how to handle the Indians by bringing them into, quote, civilization. From 1814 to 1824 in a series... Because it's your oh, because they were white supremacist what? dickholes, that's all. Well, I... But I agree. Yeah. I was trying and to make a point. Absolutely. Finish, and, and by many measures, many of the tribes and... and individuals in the tribes were way more civilized than any of the, the European colonists and, and early Americans and, and whatnot. You know? Yeah, you just stole my thing. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to steal your thunder. I'm sorry. Don't pout. See, come on that show, but you don't get to speak. We have a back and forth. We play off each other. Oh my god. I'm sure y'all could hear the eyes rolling in your head on that one. Yeah, whatever. I ate all the apple stuff, so you don't get none. That's fine. I had enough. It was very good. Man is a really good baker. She made a nice apple baked cobbler. I don't even know what you call it's it. It's baked apples. Baked apples. They were chai tea. They were chai spiced apples. Very good spicing. Blend. Very good of treaties with the southern Indians, what? whites took over three-fourths of Alabama and Florida, one-third of Tennessee, one-fifth. What are you doing? Oh. Sorry, I was, you, I Cartoon didn't. screaming in the background. <laughs> I didn't realize That's it was really, that high. <laughs> it's, it's like we're immersed in a History Channel retelling. <laughs> Don't take my land. Oh. <laughs> Human, of Georgia and Mississippi and parts of Kentucky and North Carolina. I don't have 
happened. Jackson played a key role in those treaties, and according to Rogan, quote, his friends and relatives received many of the patronage appointments as Indian agents, traders, treaty commissioners, surveyors, and land agents. Jackson himself described how the treaties were obtained. Quote, We addressed ourselves feelingly to the predominant and governing passion of all Indian tribes, i.e. their avarice or fear. Unquote. He encouraged white squatters to move into Indian lands, then told the Indians the government could not remove the whites, and so they had better cede the lands or be wiped out. He also, Rogan says, quote, practiced extensive bribery. These treaties, these land grabs, laid the basis for the Cotton Kingdom, the slave plantations. Every time a treaty was signed, pushing the creeks from one area to the next, promising them security there, whites would move into the new area, and the creeks would feel compelled to sign another treaty, giving up more land in return for security elsewhere. Jackson's work had brought the white settlements to the border of Florida, owned by Spain. Here were the villages of the Seminole Indians, joined by some Red Stick refugees and encouraged by British agents in their resistance to the Americans. Settlers moved into Indian lands. Indians attacked. Atrocities took place on both sides. When certain villages refused to surrender people accused of murdering whites, Jackson ordered the villages destroyed. Another Seminole provocation, guy, escaped the black 20. slaves took refuge in Seminole villages. Some Seminoles bought or captured black slaves, but their form of slavery was more like African slavery than cotton plantation slavery. The slaves often lived in their own villages. Their children often bill. became free. There was much intermarriage yeah. between Indians and blacks, and that. soon there were mixed Indian black villages, all of which aroused southern slave owners who saw this as a lure to their own slaves seeking freedom. Jackson began raids into Florida, arguing it was a sanctuary for escaped slaves and for marauding Indians. Florida, he said, was essential to the defense of the United States. It was that classic modern preface to a war of conquest. Thus began the Seminole War of 1818, leading to the American acquisition of Florida. It appears on classroom maps politely as Florida Purchase, 1819. <laughs> But it came from Andrew Jackson's military campaign across the Florida border, burning Seminole villages, seizing Spanish forts, until Spain was persuaded to sell. He acted, he said, by... And yeah, there you go. Andrew Jackson, original Florida man. Florida man goes on wild rampage, conquering villages to force them to turn over everything to him. Monsters. The quote, immutable laws of self defense. Self defense. Jackson then became wow. governor of the Florida Territory. He was able now to give good business advice to friends and relatives. To a nephew, he suggested holding on to property in Pensacola. To a friend, a Surgeon General in the Army, he suggested buying as many slaves as possible because the price would soon rise. Leaving his military post, he also gave advice to all the high rate of desertion. Poor whites, even if willing to give at first, may have discovered the rewards of battle going to the rich, suggested whipping for the first two attempts, and the third time, execution. The leading books on the Jacksonian period, written by respected historians, The Age of Jackson by Arthur Schlesinger, The Jacksonian Persuasion by Marvin Myers, do not mention Jackson's Indian policy. But there is much talk in them of tariffs, banking, political parties, political rhetoric. If you look through high school textbooks and elementary school textbooks in American history, you will find Jackson, the frontiersman, soldier, democrat, man of the people. Not Jackson, the slaveholder, land speculator, executioner of dissident soldiers, exterminator of Indians. This is not simply hindsight the word used for thinking back differently on the past. After Jackson was elected president in 1828, following John Quincy Adams, who had followed Monroe, who had followed Madison, who had followed Jefferson, the Indian Removal Bill came before Congress and was called, at the time, quote, the leading measure 
of the Jackson administration and, quote, the greatest question that ever came before Congress, unquote, except for matters of peace and war. By this time, the two political parties were the Democrats and Whigs, who disagreed on banks and tariffs, but not on issues crucial for the white poor, the blacks, the Indians. Although some white working people saw Jackson as their hero because he opposed the rich man's bank. Under Jackson and the man he chose to succeed him, Martin Van Buren, 70,000 Indians east of the Mississippi were forced westward. In the north, there weren't that many, and the Iroquois Confederation in New York stayed, but the Sac and Fox Indians of Illinois were removed after the Black Hawk War, in which Abraham Lincoln was an officer, although he was not in combat. When Chief Black Hawk was defeated and captured in 1832, he made a surrender speech. I fought... Well, hey, at least they named their hockey team after the tribe. Wow, what, a, what, a, what a show of respect. Yeah, because that's not super shitty. <laughs> yeah. Stupid. Fought hard, but your guns were well aimed. The bullets flew like birds in the air and whizzed by our ears like the wind through the trees in the winter. My warriors fell around me, the sun rose dim on us in the morning, and at night it sunk in a dark cloud and looked like a ball of fire. That was the last sun that shone on Black Hawk. He is now a prisoner to the white men. He has done nothing for which an Indian ought to be ashamed. He has fought for his countrymen the squaws and papooses against white men who came year after year to cheat them and take away their lands. You know the cause of our making war. It is known to all white men. They ought to be ashamed of it. Indians are not deceitful. The white men speak bad of the Indian and look at him spitefully, but the Indian does not tell lies. Indians do not steal. An Indian who is as bad as the white men could not live in our nation. He would be put to death and eaten up by the wolves. The white men are bad schoolmasters. They carry false books and deal in false actions. They smile in the face of the poor Indian to cheat him. They shake them by the hand to gain their confidence, to make them drunk, to deceive them and ruin our wives. We told them to leave us alone and keep away from us. They followed on and beset our paths. And they coiled themselves among us like the snake. They poisoned us by their touch. We were not safe. We lived in danger. We were becoming like them. Hypocrites and liars. Adulterous, lazy drones. All talkers and no workers. The white men do not scalp the head, but they do worse. They poison the heart. Farewell, my nation. Farewell to Black Hawk. I think we'll leave it there tonight. That's what, what, yeah, what a mark of uncivilization, right? To have an eloquent speech like that, you know, with all the, the poetry of, of any of the contemporary European poets or American poets of the time. But yeah, the, the Indians were uncivilized, 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 uncivilized. Civilized. Ow. They scalp your tax dollars. <laughs> um, and and so therefore didn't deserve any of those lands that they had. They you know they were basically like wild animals living on it. You know, so it's okay if you take it. It'd just be like taking land that deer live in. You know, it's not not really theirs to begin with, right? But it is theirs because it's their shelter, their food. Well, but, but, but it also is even more so the land of the native people that live there because they were every bit as as well spoken and civilized. I cannot say that word tonight. Civilized as uh, civilized. As you can say, ah. <laughs> go Thanks for the support. <laughs> I'm go you. Um, as as any of the Europeans or the European descended people. So. Hashtag make Zach get me a gaming chair so I can actually stay out of the stream. There you go. If I get 50 subscribers, I will buy Amanda a gaming chair and she will come more often to our streams. Um.
All right. Well, it was a, it was a fun time with you, despite the the heavy subject matter. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you all for for joining tonight. Um, In the most recent episode of America is a piece of shit. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so. Still not going to be doing the, the Wednesday shows yet because we're still in the in the process of trying to find a place to live. Please don't knock my phone on the floor. It's tangled on your foot. Please don't move. Oh, my God. Oh, oh you got to lift your foot up a little bit. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> That's enough leg lifts for the day. Yeah. All right. I'm going to turn off the air conditioner because Arctic blast in the side of my face. Whatever. We don't all like to live in just like a polar kingdom where we can just snuggle in our little igloo of blankets. Oh my God, that's her favorite way to sleep is when it's really cold in the room, but then she gets to be warm under the, the blankets. Loves it. But I digress. So anyway, heavy subject matter tonight. And uh, I don't anticipate this chapter looking up or getting any rosier. The The... Americans' interaction with natives has always been dismal and and <laughs> incredibly inhumane from the beginning. And you know, this is not our first uh, um, round of, of such encounters. You know, the book starts off that way with the entire genocide of of Hispaniola. So, so yeah, fun stuff, but important stuff nonetheless. It's important to know the true history of, of where you come from or where this nation comes from. And uh, thank you. Thank you, James. I appreciate that. Um, important to know where America comes from and what structures are still in place that were put there uh, intentionally by by these really horrible founding fathers that don't deserve even half of the reverence that they get. I know hot take here but uh yeah like i said wouldn't care if you tore down every single monument to every president ever <laughs> i i don't care they are not people to be worshipped um and and doing so just props up the the systems that that still keep things status quo for those who are in the best positions and mean to keep it that way well, at the expense of everyone else. So with that, I will. Uh, we will find someone to raid into. Got any suggestions? Now's the time to shout them out. Otherwise, I'm just going to pick somebody. Uh, maybe we'll do Altered Rin. Been a while since I have raided their channel. And they are doing... Oh... Aliens Control Hollywood, Woke Agenda, Alex Jones Trial, Trump Mind Powers. Wow, looks like they're covering a bunch of cool conspiracy stuff. But currently away from the computer. I don't know. Um, so that'll be who we'll raid into. Thanks, Port Nickel, for stopping by. It was, it was fun to have you in the stream. Hope to see you in future streams again. Yeah, have you yet fun? That's That's what I aim for. So thank you. Uh, but yeah. So we'll, we'll raid Alt. Well, you know, Alterin is, is... Oh, they're back. Cool. Ooh. Cool makeup, too. It's always a fun time with Alterin. So I will leave you with them. Um, if you are by chance finding this record, recording of the stream later on, and you want to check out Alterin... That is the place to do it. Go check them out. And we will begin the raid, assuming that they are allowing raids. I've been running into a lot of people that block raids from people that they don't follow personally or people that are not part of their Twitch group or something like that. So assuming the raid works, that's who we will raid into. But it may not. I just, I just never know. Uh, so let's go back to my, where's my stream manager now? There we go, stream manager. That's what I wanted to do. We'll raid the channel, and I will see you all next Sunday. I'm really going to try, and, uh, or this next, this upcoming Sunday. 
really going to try and get it together and um, why is it not pasting? Oh, did burn. There we go. And uh, start with the uh, reading through and audio recording. I'm going to be putting together an audiobook version of Permaculture Designer's Manual, a very, like, one of the most important texts in permaculture, uh, which does not exist, uh, to my knowledge, in audio form. So you can come along with me on that journey as we try and translate all the various uh, images into text um, and put things together in a pleasing, uh, logically flowing manner so that everyone can enjoy a permaculture designer's manual, even if you only have the time to do audiobooks, which is, you know, a place that I find myself in. Uh, that's, that's primarily how I consume books. But anyway, just look for that on Sunday. Otherwise, I'll see you back here Monday for more of a people's history of the United States. Here goes the raid. Assuming they allow. Yes, they are allowing. Very cool. Have a good night, everybody.